My name is Charlie and on this channel I make videos about building wealth and achieving financial freedom so that you can free up your time to focus on the things that you truly care about. So this is the 10th episode of my Road to Financial Freedom series and if you're not familiar this is a series where I document the growth of a small portfolio that I started about 9 months ago which I'm trying to grow as quickly as possible using the strategies that I talk about on this channel like covered call writing and leaps option buying. So I initially deposited $5,000 and in addition to that I'm also depositing $200 every single week. So the goal is basically to simulate the portfolio of someone working to achieve financial freedom starting from scratch and to see how quickly it can actually be done. So with all that said, let's take a look at how the portfolio is doing so far. So as of the end of the day on August 31st, 2021, the account is sitting at $14,195, and that's based on a total deposited amount of $12,650. So that represents a gain of about $1,545, which is about a 15% return. And in terms of a monthly return, that's about 1.6%, and annually about 21%. So as I've said from the beginning, this is a somewhat experimental portfolio because I prefer to trade more established blue chip companies, which you kind of need a bigger portfolio in order to do. So I'm definitely learning a few things about how these smaller stocks operate for covered calls and that's the main thing that I want to discuss in this video. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the trades that I made this month starting with the premiums that I brought in. So in August of 2021, I brought in a total premium of $758, which is about a 5.5% return as a percentage of my total portfolio. And as a refresher, I aim to achieve about 2-6% to per month in premiums, so I'm definitely happy with that 5.5%. And as I always say, as long as I'm still able to bring in solid premiums, I'll be happy, because really the main concern with covered call writing is that your stocks drop to the point where you can no longer bring in any solid premiums. But the challenges that I'm seeing with this portfolio come in when I take a look at the actual values of the covered call stocks that I'm trading. So right now my main stocks are ChargePoint and Corsair, and then I also have a poor man's covered call on AMD. Now AMD has performed very well since its last earnings report, and right now my leaps option is down in value, but I'm able to continue selling calls against it, and I had several previous poor man's covered calls on AMD that I ended up very profitable on. But ChargePoint and Corsair on the other hand, although I really do like the companies, and they generally meet my criteria that works well for bigger, more established stocks, they're not performing the way that I had initially hoped. Now don't get me wrong, I still like holding these stocks and I'm still happy selling calls against them, but what I mean when I say that they're not performing the same way that I would expect from a bigger, more established company is that they're both showing strong growth and increasing revenue on a regular basis, but because they don't have quite as much of that institutional money that bigger stocks have, the stock price isn't really being pushed higher at the same level that you would expect. But at the same time, if I'm looking at pretty much any stock in the market trading below about $30 per share, really none of them perform the same way as a bigger company with that solid consistent growth. So I think that part of selling covered calls on a smaller portfolio like this is just having to deal with some of these more volatile companies. And although again, I'm still happy to hold these companies and I think they'll do great in the long term, as this portfolio continues to grow, I plan to sell a much higher proportion of poor man's covered calls on those more established blue chip companies rather than trying to pick these cheaper stocks for traditional covered calls. And I know that if you're starting out with a smaller portfolio, even poor man's covered calls may not be feasible at first. So it really goes to show that those consistent weekly deposits are the most important factor when you're first growing your portfolio. And so for those of you that are trying to achieve financial freedom, I would recommend saving as much as you can, just putting it into your brokerage account and dollar cost averaging into those stocks that you like, whether it be for covered calls or for long-term holds. And once you get to about ten dollars to $20,000, you can really focus in on selling poor men's covered calls on more established solid companies. Now over the lifetime of this portfolio, which again has only been about 9 months, I brought in $4,500 worth of premium. So really as soon as my covered call stocks recover, which I do expect them to do soon enough, this portfolio will be doing really really well. And even as it stands right now, it's not doing badly, I mean up 15%, I'm definitely happy with that, but I know that it could be doing better. In my main portfolio, I've been able to maintain 4.5% monthly returns over the course of more than two years since I really dialed in this strategy. So the potential is there, but it is somewhat dependent on how your stocks actually perform. 
But in the long term, as I continue to collect those premiums, it should outweigh the performance of the stocks anyways, because I'll just have brought in so much premium that the portfolio has no choice but to be up in value. And just a quick little plug here, if you wanna see the stocks that I'm selling covered calls on on my main portfolio, you can see that on my Patreon. And I actually just introduced a new highest tier where you can get instant portfolio updates using a new app called Iris. So if you join on Patreon, you'll have the ability to follow me over there. And whenever I make a trade on either this portfolio or my main personal portfolio, you can get a notification. And as of now, I don't think it lets you see how many shares I bought or anything like that, but I'll add notes underneath each trade so that you can see what the purpose of it was. So again, if you're interested in that, or if you just want to get access to these spreadsheets or my spreadsheet template, be sure to check me out over on Patreon. And I also post weekly portfolio updates on my Instagram account. So if you just want to keep up to date on this portfolio, be sure to follow me over there as well. Anyway, so I don't plan to make any changes in my covered call stocks at this time, but as I get these shares called away from me, I don't plan to buy back into them. Again, I'll probably just start to enter more poor man's covered call positions on more established stocks. So for example, I have a charge point call expiring this Friday, September 3rd at the $25 strike price. And ChargePoint actually released earnings today and they showed very strong revenue growth and projected strong revenue growth into the future. So after hours, it's trading over $23 per share. So there is a chance that it could exceed that strike price by the expiration date. Either way, I'll just continue selling calls against both of these stocks until they recover. Because again, I do really like the companies. Now looking at my leaps options, right now I only have one holding, which is a Nike call call at the $200 strike price which expires in January of 2023 and when I bought it it was at a delta of about 0.4. So Nike is a company that's been showing very strong revenue growth from quarter to quarter and it has pulled back just slightly so this option is down in value from the time I bought it and I do expect the stock to recover soon enough. Then looking at my long term holds, I can't remember if I got to it in the last episode, but I did buy one more share of Apple, one more share of Nike, and one share of MasterCard. And in total, my long term holds are up about $388. Now, like I mentioned in the last episode, once my portfolio exceeds about 15,000, I'll start thinking about selling some naked calls as well. But right now I'm gonna hold off on that. So that's all I wanted to talk about in this episode. But speaking of naked calls, if you wanna see the actual naked call trades that I've been making recently in my main portfolio, be sure to check out that video in the bottom right corner of the screen. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all in that next video.